Hello everyone, welcome back. So, today is going to be a video about Antimony. Now, this is going to be a really long one, so I'm going to be uploading a shorter one probably tomorrow. So, uh, definitely look forward to that. If you're not already, do subscribe, uh, and if you'd, if you'd like to see a more brief version of this, that's gonna be the perfect video for you. So anyway, let's just jump into it. Antimony is element number 51 on the periodic table of elements. It is a metalloid, meaning it is somewhere between a metal and a non-metal. The chemical symbol for antimony is SB for stibium, which is the Latin name for antimony. More on that later. There are two stable isotopes of antimony, antimony 121 and antimony 123. Antimony possesses a Mohs hardness of 3, which is just above the Mohs hardness for aluminum, which is 2.75. Interesting to note that also it has a melting point of 1167 Fahrenheit or 631 Celsius, which is just below the melting point of aluminum. Antimony trisulfide was originally used by the ancient Egyptians as an eye decoration, something along the lines of eyeliner or eyeshadow or something like that. It was called kohol or something like that. Not entirely sure how to pronounce it, but that was the best I could do. Um, now, as far as regular native elemental antimony being used, there was a part of a vase dating back to about 3000 BC that was found in modern day Iraq, what would have been back then Chaldea, and it is likely the oldest sample of native or pure antimony being used on record. Uh, Pliny the Elder, who was a Roman, much later on, uh, wrote descriptions that are thought to be of antimony uh, trisulfide, which is what the Egyptians were using, and also native antimony. Um, he used two different descriptors for them, I'm not entirely sure which was which. Also, an Islamic scientist, and I hope I pronounced this correctly, Jabir ibn Hayyan, is one of the first people who is credited with intentionally isolating antimony sometime prior to 815 AD. Now, the details of his very existence are a little bit debated. They're not sure if it was actually multiple people given the same name or whether this is a pseudonym for somebody else, but the process of intentionally isolating antimony was first penned by this potential gentleman. China dominates antimony production. Uh, as of 2010, they have been producing 90% of the antimony in the world, which makes them far and away the largest producer of antimony. The top four antimony mines in the world are located in China, that is the top four by production alone. Uh, China also has massive antimony reserves, probably beating everybody else in the world combined, although I'm not entirely sure on that one. Antimony's place on the periodic table is an interesting one. First off, just some of its chemical properties, antimony is a chalcophile, which means it is attracted to chalcogens mostly, um, oxygen, sulfur, selenium, tellurium, potentially polonium if it would exist more than about five minutes. Antimony is also a nictogen, which is in the same group as nitrogen. So all the nictogens are nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, and bismuth. Antimony, as I mentioned earlier, is also a metalloid, meaning it is classified as both and neither a metal and a non-metal. This interesting classification is shared by silicon, germanium, boron, and a couple other elements out there. And of course, metalloid isn't really a hard and fast term sometimes. Some elements can be considered a metalloid, some can be considered a non-metalloid. It really depends on who you ask. Horizontally, it is located between tin and tellurium, which means that it's somewhat heavy. It's not as heavy as, say, lead or bismuth, but it is heavier than something like silicon or aluminum. So, 
That's definitely something to keep in mind about antimony as an element. Now as for its chemical symbol, Sb, as I mentioned earlier, it is for stibium, which is the old Latin name for it. Now some of you are probably wondering where we get the name antimony from. Antimony is derived from Byzantine Greek, and beyond that, not much is really known about the origins of the name antimony. Even stibium is kind of a weird one because we don't really know the origins of that beyond Old Latin. There are a variety of sources it could have come from potentially on both ends, so it is what it is. Now for the part that you've all been waiting for, the toxicity of antimony. Now I've seen sort of mixed reviews on this one. I've seen opinions saying that antimony is actually pretty non-toxic compared to a lot of the other elements in its area. And I've also seen people say that it's extremely toxic. So I've kind of sort of tried to take a little bit of a middle ground on it, but err to the side of caution, obviously. Antimony, when inhaled in small particle form, can be really, really bad for the lungs. Uh, it can cause lung cancer and other issues, specifically antimony trioxide. Antimony trioxide is seen as a possible human carcinogen, which can be really bad down the road as carcinogens are cancer-causing elements and chemicals. Antimony trioxide and antimony pentoxide can both be toxic to humans as well, uh, causing a variety of issues, whether it's in the bloodstream, the lungs, or pretty much anywhere in the body. The oxides of antimony have been known to be absorbed through the skin, be ingested and absorbed, and be inhaled and absorbed. Um, all of these can cause some serious health effects, that look quite similar to arsenic poisoning, which makes sense because both are nictogens. They're both in the same group and tend to act somewhat similarly. Although skin absorption has been observed, um, from what I understand it's been observed with antimony trioxide and antimony pentoxide. Um, I haven't seen anything on elemental antimony, though I do try and stay away from it just in case the same applies to antimony itself. Now there are obvious differences between antimony and arsenic as far as toxicity is concerned as there are differences in uptake metabolism and excretion. Uh, much like arsenic, antimony can mess with cell metabolism which makes it particularly dangerous. So key lesson here being don't mess with antimony in dangerous ways. Exposure to antimony dust, like many other metal dusts, also can cause skin problems, though this could be due to sweat duct blocking. So antimony powder uh, getting on the skin can cause some dermatitis and uh, really mess with the skin, but it could just be because it blocks pores, um, like many other metal dusts and just dusts in general. Uh, can cause some skin issues. So not just chemical issues, but also physical issues can be present when working with antimony. So I would personally advise caution. Antimony has a wide variety of uses. Perhaps the most surprising use for me when I was researching this was fireproof materials, which is interesting because that's actually most of the modern use of antimony. About 60% of modern antimony production is devoted to fireproof materials. Now, this is mostly in the area of antimony trioxide, not elemental antimony. But, the point remains, antimony's use in fireproof materials actually outweighs most of its other uses. Now, the other uses of antimony are as an alloying agent for batteries, bearings, and lead alloys. Um, antimony those of you who don't know, actually hardens lead. And I think I may have mentioned that in my lead video, though I'm not actually sure. It's been a while since I've recorded that. Antimony is used in lead alloys in areas, as I've mentioned, like batteries, but also in high-speed projectiles. It hardens the lead enough to where it can actually be used effectively without the lead just disintegrating as soon as it hits its operating speed. And temperature probably too. Now there are also other uses for antimony 
and its oxides and such and its compounds and things like paints, uh, glass, pottery, and other things like that. Another strange use for antimony, which is actually quite useful in videos like this and the production thereof, is in N-type silicon semiconductors. It's used as a dopant, so it affects the electrochemistry of the silicon and um, gives it a negative charge or something like that. I don't know. It was explained to me once a while ago, and I have since forgotten, but I do know that it is used in N-type silicon semiconductors. When alloyed with indium, antimony itself can be a semiconductor. Um, that is in the compound of indium antimonide. I pretty much just got a bag of antimony to alloy it with other stuff. Um, you guys have seen me work with antimony before uh, as an alloying agent. Uh, for instance, this ring is actually partially made of antimony. In fact, I think antimony might be the thing that's causing it to be yellow. I alloyed antimony with some brass, but that was only after a lot of zinc cooked off making the brass essentially just copper with a minor zinc content. Um, but then I added some antimony, and I think some manganese. I think I may have added some manganese into that one, but I don't think the manganese melted in. So this ring contains some antimony. Now, mind you, this isn't all antimony, again, because weirdness surrounding the toxicity of antimony I've elected not to make a pure antimony ring and wear it all the time. That would not be a good idea. But something containing just a little bit of antimony, I'm more comfortable with wearing. Well, that pretty much concludes everything I have to say about antimony. All around, I just find it to be a really interesting semi-metal. It is useful but it's useful in a lot of really weird ways, and ways you wouldn't really think of or imagine. But the likelihood is you probably encounter antimony on quite a regular basis and don't even know it. So, it's a good, useful metalloid. So, I like it. In fact, it might actually replace silicon as my favorite metalloid, which is so weird to say, but it's really easy to melt, and it's pretty useful. I do kind of like it. I do kind of like it. And I do plan on getting more of it at some point, and maybe even making a pure antimony ingot. We'll see. We'll see. I haven't decided on it yet. With that, thank you guys for joining me for this video. If you found this video interesting, do like and subscribe. Um, yeah, feel free to comment as well. I do need some suggestions for future videos, so if you have those, please do leave those in the comments section. With that, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.